Good afternoon, everyone. Rains are descending upon the Orville Dam area. The amount of concrete they're putting down in emergency measures. One area overlooked seems to be the connection between the parking lot and the weir, the emergency spillway itself. While all eyes are pointed up there, let's look at the base of the dam. It seems they're trying to make a break for incredible backflow. Look at the precipitation coming. Yellow is four inches. The entire drainage basin here going to be flowing into that dam. Everywhere you look, seven day QPF, five to six inches, more localized forecast showing the same up to seven to nine inches. They've lowered the dam to 870 feet, but with that much flow coming in, they're looking at 140 feet of inflow. Minus the 127 outflow means that emergency spillway will overtop 13 feet. The last overtop was two to two and a half feet with that much damage. You need to ask yourself what's going to happen this time. The number crunchers are on it. And if there is a breach at that connection, the uncontrolled release will be 5,800,000 cubic feet per second. And if this thing does break during this storm, the wipeout of the gas pipelines going north, the wipeout of the highways and road system in Northern California, are you prepared? Emergency spillway, massive damage control effort to shore up concrete, drop rocks and do everything they can as this storm descends on that area starting right now. A wide out view here, you can see where they've been dumping rocks and concrete. The lighter gray areas is the new rock where they've concreted in and tried to shore up. Aerial view, bottom of the concrete spillway eroding slowly but surely. One thing they're not really shoring up or taking care of is that actual connection of the weir between the parking lot and the emergency overflow spillway. And this one coming off the comment board of the articles I've linked below in the comment box. The wet side of the emergency spillway, it only looks to be six feet deep versus 30 feet that we were told in the news. Also with all the calculations coming in with rainfall versus the size of the drainage basin and the acreage of the lake, they're looking at 140 feet of inflow minus the possible 127 feet outflow means that this emergency spillway is going to overtop by 13 feet this storm. The last overtop was only two to two and a half feet, and it did that much damage. And they were so worried about complete failure of that emergency spillway section that they evacuated. So something that's three or four times more powerful, what kind of damage will it do this time? And while all eyes are pointing to the top of the dam, let's look at the base of the dam. What's going on down there? Some emergency measures as well. It looks like they're trying to create a break, a buffer from the backflow. So they are intending to let that full outflow roll at 250,000 cubic feet per second on that concrete spillway, regardless of the amount of damage that will happen or erosion. They're really between a rock and a hard place. And I'm not trying to make a joke about that either with showing you this giant boulder rock abutment there, but truly... They're out of options. The forecast amount of rain coming in. Let's look at the progression here. This will take us through February 20th, February 21st. The entire drainage basin will be inundated with water and snow. And if that rain is just above freezing, it's going to create snow melt. Extended forecast, Oroville. Heavy rain, heavy rain, 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 rain. Showers, showers, and more rain. Snow forecast, again, it's going to be at higher elevations, so some of that precipitation will be trapped in the form of snowfall. But when we're looking out at February 16th, here's where it comes right now. February 18th, that storm keeps rolling right through. February 22nd, the second storm inundates the area. Again, three to four inches. And GFS does a good pull on this to show where everything is going to collide with the western coast. Look at the precipitation forecast from NOAA showing the same thing, up to 5 inches. The National Weather Service and NOAA combined forecast for Sacramento area. 
This will take you through the 24-hour period rolling through the 16th. More localized six-day forecast precipitation up to February 21st. You're getting way up into that eight and nine inch areas up into the windward facing side of the mountain as that storm slams and grabs the peaks. Looking at a little more detailed forecast. Detailed forecast here, you can pause, take a look at between half an inch, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, tenth of an inch, half an inch, just day after day after day after day. This is an image of the Feather River watershed. So as this drains out, if this dam breaks, Yuba City, Merrillville, absolutely going to be scoured off this planet. So far, they've been able to drop the water depths down to about 870 feet. But the inflows that are going to start immediately are going to bring that right back up slowly but surely. They're going to be battling again to outflow what the inflow is. And when you hear about measurements, 100,000 cubic feet per second is 2.2 acre feet. So you can use either when they're talking about how much they're draining off or how much inflow is coming in. Ice Age Now, Robert Felix's site, put some measurements together at 137 feet down to 114 feet of inflow. Compare what they can put through the concrete spillway. Back up to the what's up with that comment board. Calculations over there looking at about a 120 foot rise. They are going to need to increase that from 100,000 cubic feet up. And they just really don't know is it going to erode backward up the mountain. And as it makes its way further back up, is it going to come off that side valley and start getting right to the base of the dam with the erosion going parallel with the dam? This is just an unprecedented event. Another six inches possible over the next week to 10 days. And if it rips, remember, you're looking at about 5.8 million cubic feet per second. Something 58 times the current flow going down the concrete spillway, unchecked, ripping through that mountain valley and all the drainage basins going out, flooding. You know, flooding is an understatement. Scouring. Towns, cities, highways, and whatever else is in its way. And for some reason, if they're in their wildest dream able to lower the lake levels to 813 feet, they will not be able to spill any more out. And it will simply fill up from there and then it will be a battle against inflow and outflow. And join me tomorrow night when John Casey and I discuss his book, Upheaval. As you know, my channel is mainly devoted to Effects of the sun and the mini ice age based on 400 year cyclical patterns. During every grand solar minimum, there is a catastrophic quake on the New Madrid fault zone up the Mississippi River basin. And John in his book details the absolute wipeout of infrastructure that will happen in this mega quake. But we need to just simply use the same parallels and come over here into California if this inland tsunami wipes everything clean in its path, which it will, how many natural gas pipelines are going to be wiped out? How many interstates and roadways are going to be scoured clean? It's not going to be like repairing a bridge. They're going to have to completely rebuild, resurvey, refoundation, relay everything. It will be scoured from this earth. And are you prepared for that? When we look here, the flooding as well, how's that going to affect agriculture in Northern California? What about the delivery systems to and from supermarkets? If you're without gas, you're without power, you're without food. Are you prepared? And the drainage basin for sure, Marysville and Yuba City, we need only go back to the 1860s and this is Sacramento. This was the flooding that came out of the exact same drainage basin and when they built the dam, they were only looking at cycles and historical record from the last 150 years. We are entering a new grand solar minimum that is going to take us into 400 year cyclical pattern, record breaking, 400 year floods, 400 year snowfalls, 400 year temperature records broken. And this is just another example of it in play. And when you simply look at the amount of water coming on this flood, 
This is just one storm. There's three more lined up out in the Pacific to follow after this with the same intensity, same amount of rainfall, and how much more can this dam endure? For all of you listening, I truly say this from the bottom of my heart. You need to prepare to get out of there because this dam, I do not believe, is going to hold. Once you leave your home, what you have in your car is what you will get to keep. They're not going to warn you days in advance to tell you this very fact that what you leave with in your car is all you will have remaining in your life. Governments will not tell you that. People will panic. They will choose to die with their stuff than they will to leave with a car full of possessions and leave everything behind. So you need to take these warnings seriously that there is a lot of water coming in and the power of nature dwarfs what we think we can control. And it is gross negligence by the California Water Department, the governor of California, the regional, state, and local authorities criminal act not to tell you that this amount of rain is coming in this storm and the possibilities of an overtop are three to five times larger than the last overtop of the emergency spillway. Whether it collapses or doesn't collapse, it is gross negligence for them not to at least ask you to pack an emergency evacuation bag for you and your family to get out of there alive. They gave you half an hour of warning last time after they said everything was safe. What happens when this time if the dam really does come down and they give you half an hour to get out of there? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And if you like my work and the type of stories I'm bringing you, please support me on Patreon.